Hello world, welcome to episode 2 of the Knit Up River podcast. My name is Carrie and I am the owner and head dyer at Yakagani Yarns. This is my little podcast about knitting and crocheting and generally all of my crafty adventures. I am coming to you today from my home in southwestern Pennsylvania where I live with my husband Todd and our boxer Tonka. We do have one daughter. She is currently serving in the United States Air Force and is stationed in Texas. If you are a returning viewer, I want to welcome you back and thank you for coming to spend some more time with me. If you're a new viewer, hello and I appreciate the opportunity that you're giving me. As always, I want to thank every one of you who has subscribed to the channel. I do appreciate that. If you have not done so yet, you can do so by pushing that little red button that's down below. Uh, you can find me, let me see, on Instagram as Yak Yarns, on Ravelry as Carrie Jean. We also have a Ravelry group called Yakagani Yarns, and you can find that by searching the groups tab. Um, from the main Ravelry page. I also have a Facebook page for Yakagani Yarns and as I'll, you know, also have an Etsy store. A uh, little bit of administrative stuff that I did forget to talk about last week and I apologize for that. I do have a holiday gift, knit along, crochet along going on in the Ravelry group. Um, in order to participate, you do need to be a member of the Ravelry group. I ask that at least 50% of the yarn that you're using be Yakagani yarn, works in progress count, does not matter if it's knit or crochet, and you have until November 30th to get it done. Um, there is a chatter thread, and there's also an FO thread. The winner, winner will be drawn from the FO thread. When I looked right before I recorded this, there was only one valid entry in the FO thread. You know who you are. Moderators do not count. So don't be intimidated by the number. You know, there are a few projects in there that are finished. But right now, there's only one that's eligible to win. So if you have something going in Yakagini Yarn, or at least part Yakagini Yarn, pop on over, jump in on the knit along crochet along. It does not matter who the gift is for. Gifts for yourself count as well because we are completely knit and crochet worthy. If we're not, nobody is. Uh, first thing I'm going to talk to you about today are my works in progress. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about crochet first. I am working on the Loopy Love Blanket and I will have all my projects in the show notes which can be found on the website. I will put a link to the website in the description below. You can get to the show notes on the podcast page from there. Um, but yeah, I started the Loopy Love Blanket for a girlfriend of mine and her husband. They are expecting their first baby. She is due in May. And yes, I know I am way ahead of the game, but that's okay. I'd rather be early than not get it done in time. So here is what I have so far. Let me get this turned right way around. The little red progress keeper there. My skull from One's Life Ox. So cute. Um, that is what I have gotten done since I talked to you guys last, which was about 10, 10 days ago, I think. Super, super simple pattern, very easily memorized. Um, I work on this a lot when, well, worked on it a lot when we were watching TV and whatnot, do my uh, whole Netflixing thing, depending on what we're catching up on. And I am, show you my yarn again, working on, this was uh, Deep Stash, Deep Deep Stash, this is an Unger Utopia Sport. I think my mom may have given me this yarn. She purchased it somewhere and decided she wasn't going to use it. So she said, here, you can have this. And yeah, it's finally becoming a baby blanket. It is 100% acrylic, but with babies, I think that's important because it can be washed and dried as often as you need it to be. And there's no special care that mom or dad has to, you know, really place or pay attention to. It's white. They are not finding out if it's a boy or a girl. So I'm kind of excited about this. It'll work either way. It's not too lacy. It's not too um, masculine. It'll be a nice neutral blanket. And with it being white, if they decide they want to use it for the baptism, they can. But it's okay if they don't. I'm good with that as well. The next one I'm going to show you is living in my 
Mrs. Brown's Yarns Black Bag. Um, thank you, Jody, again. I love, love, love my bag. It is absolutely fantastic. And I am, I showed this to you guys last week as well. I'm working on my flax light sweater. Get this right way up here. There. It is knit top down. I have made quite a bit of progress. That's where I was when I talked to you guys last. You can see I have over, I think a little over nine inches done on from the underarm in the body. And uh, I'm hoping to have this done by the end of November, beginning of December. I'd love to be able to wear it this year. I'm kind of notorious for starting projects like this and not finishing them until the following year. I did that this year. I started one last August and I finished it in July. Finally got to wear it a couple weeks ago. If you watch my Instagram feed, you will have seen a picture of that sweater. I am knitting this in uh, Yakagini Yarns Wooly Yak. This is the Rust colorway really gorgeous tonal burnt orange type of thing and I'll talk more about the woolly yak when we get to the uh, end of the pop podcast when I talk about shop updates and things like that uh, I've also got this is another Mrs. Brown's bag but this week I have a it's a half object yay these are my pumpkin waffle socks. It's the blueberry waffle pattern. I am using Cascade Heritage paints for the body. Um, I think this is colorway 9801. I'm not positive. You can check my project page on Ravelry for that. The heel, toe, and cuff was a random mini. I don't know what colorway it was. I got this at one of the Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Festivals from the Holiday Yarns. This is her flock sock base, and I do apologize for the light. If it keeps fading in and out, um, we are having kind of a gray day here, and for me to turn the overhead light on, it just makes it too harsh and nasty. The glare is horrible. But I'm really, really loving the way the sock is coming out, the spiraling effect. I, I wear a U.S. Women's size 6.5. Now I use a uh, size 1 needle, which is a 2.25 millimeter. Okay, these are my Knitter's Pride, which I really, really like these needles. Um, sort of a wonderful combination of grippy and slippy, so I don't drop any of these stitches. But I kind of modified because the blueberry waffle pattern, if you look at it, actually is written for DK weight yarn. So I did, you know, adjust it. I had somebody ask me how many stitches I cast on for a six U.S. Women's six and a half sock. I cast on 64, but make sure you check your gauge, please, please, please. Um, just because that works for me does not mean it will necessarily work for you. So yeah, the heel. For, before I forget to mention the heel and the toe, are actually um, from the Rose City Rollers pattern. I used you know, just the standard heel flap she has and the rounded toe from that pattern because I did not really care for the way that anything in the uh, Ashley Blueberry Waffle pattern was written for those. I like that heel, I like that, kind of like that toe, so just sort of merging things and making it work for me. I'm hoping to have those done, I want to say by Thanksgiving. I don't know if I'll make that deadline. But I kind of would like to have them done this month at least. That way I can wear those too. Warm socks are always nice. But the weather's been really screwy here. Um, this month, the other day, it was like 40 some degrees. Today we're in the 50s. It's supposed to be in the mid-70s on Friday. And then they're calling for snow on Sunday. How crazy is that? It's really, really screwy. And the last one, this is in my bird leg bags. Voodoo doll bag. She will occasionally put these in her shop. It doesn't happen very often. So follow her feed on Instagram as well and you might be able to get one. But this is the bank head hat. Another free pattern on Ravelry. And I'm knitting this in Cascade 220 Superwash. The color is just number 1923. It's this gorgeous red 
that is shot through. I don't know if you can see it real well with a little bit of black, but it's a real, real deep, deep dark red. My husband actually picked this out. This hat is for him. Um, and I've just got part of the ribbing done. It's not that great. Yeah, I'm going to turn this. Excuse me while I stand up. Hope that's a little bit better. There we go. But yeah. So I have part of the ribbing done. And there is the color. I know it's not the best light, but it's better than what we're getting from outside. So. And yes, you did see a little TARDIS. I got this at a Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Festival the one year too. I don't remember who I got it from, but my little TARDIS. Gotta love Doctor Who. Who doesn't love Doctor Who? And right now, that's all I have as far as whips in, or uh, works in progress. Um, I did not get a chance to start my vanilla latte socks yet. The yarn is still caked up and hiding in my bag. Hoping I'll get to those next. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I do have a few more Christmas gifts I want to get done. Um, with my daughter being in the military, unfortunately she will not be making it home for Christmas this year. Um, but that's okay. We kind of knew that going in. So we are working on getting her stuff together, mainly just little stuff that we can send to her. So I do have a few more things I want to try to get done for her. No, I'm not going to say because I think she might watch the podcast. It's hard hard to know with her. Depends on how her studies are going. And she better be studying if she is watching this. Um, so yeah. On to finished objects. Yay! So if you watched episode one, um, you'll know that this is sort of the year of the hat. I have had that I don't know who sings that song, but some of you will know what I'm talking about. There is a song that that, that line fits in with really well. Um, but last week I showed you the knit night hat that I did for my one sister-in-law. And uh, I said I thought maybe I was going to make her husband a hat that would kind of coordinate with it. And here it is. This is another bank head hat done in Unplanned Peacock colorway is Galaxy. This is her super wash worsted weight and I'm really really happy with how this came out. It definitely is more of a beanie. No I'm not going to put it on. I, this style does not look good on my head. I don't usually wear hats in all honesty um, but I'm really really thrilled with how it came out. They're both huge Doctor Who fans and I think this yarn even though it's not meant to be Doctor Who it is very Doctor Who themed whether it was intended or not but it's really kind of cool I really really like it I'm happy with how this came out this is the hat that sparked the red one for my husband because my husband looked at it and he said that's a really nice hat I wouldn't mind having one if that's not a hint for a Christmas gift I don't know what it is the second one I have here this is a oh and the bankhead hat is by Susie Gorley if you haven't tried her patterns they were written very very well and I really really like that one the second one here is the Violet Waffles hat by Haldora J. I do have this stuff all written down here below me in case you're wondering. No, I don't have it memorized. Um, very warm, very squishy kind of hat. Uh, each one of these only took me about a day and a half to get done. It really wasn't that bad. A couple hours TV knitting and I had a gift. I don't know who this one is going to be for yet. It is done also in Cascade 220 Superwash. Um, don't know the color number on this. I lost the ball band a long time ago. It was, again, from Deep Deep Stash. But I really, really like this hat. It's going to be warm and squishy and soft for whoever ends up getting it. And I'm very pleased with the way it came out. Again, Violet Waffles. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. And yes, I will have the links in my show notes. Um, it's been kind of a busy 10 days for me since I talked to you guys last. Uh, I know it looks like I've gotten a bunch of knitting done, but for me that really, really was not a whole lot. Um, I do have a festival that's coming up, so I have been prepping for that, doing a lot of dyeing, trying to get things together and organized and straighten out, make sure I don't forget anything for the show that we're going to be doing. I do have a few acquisitions. I ordered some yarn. It has not come in yet, so I'll talk about that when it actually gets here. But the things I do have to show you, if you have not found it, I would suggest, this did not come in subscription, I actually found it on the newsstand at the local supermarket. 
I picked up a copy of the Interweave Knits Holiday Edition 2016. Now this is the abridged edition. They did not have the unabridged, but that's okay. And tell me, the snowmen on the front are not, not super adorable. I'm thinking I might have to make one of these for my Christmas tree this year. I have some white sock weight yarn that's left over from another project hiding back there in my stash and some really really cool things I think would make awesome scarves and whatnot so let's see what I can come up with for that but the pattern that I really really want to do and I might not get these cast on until after Christmas I love these socks check out how awesome those socks are all those lovely cables on there aren't they just gorgeous so I'm thinking those might be my Christmas cast on. I don't know exactly when I'll start them. I'm not even sure what color I will use, but I know they need to be in my wardrobe. So that was why I bought that one. And then I was lucky enough, um, I do have a subscription to Interweave Knits, and this came in my mail just a couple of days ago. So yeah, this is the Winter 2017 edition. If you have a chance, pick this one up. There are so many gorgeous sweaters in this one. I have one. My husband saw it. He really, really likes it. So I'm thinking I may have to cast that one on for him. Go get some yarn. I think it's done in a DK weight. But I may have to get some yarn and cast that on for my husband. He does not usually ask for sweaters. So the fact that he picked that one out of the magazine and has been commenting on how awesome it looks. I think he made that one in his life. And this one, I think, needs to go into my sweater queue. Not that I don't already have a ton of them in my queue, but I think I might need to knit that one, too. I love this latticework cabling that's on here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And of course, there's a bunch of other stuff in there that's just insanely wonderful. So if you haven't gotten this one, Definitely, you can get, get it from their website, but I know you can also probably find it on your local newsstand. This one is, I really think this one's worth checking out. Now, the rest of my acquisitions are not knitting related per se. Um, some of them are sewing, but this is one thing I found, um, sorry about the uns and the ahs. I found this when we went to the Mother Earth News Festival this year. It was held at Seven Springs Mountain Resort. It is uh, organized by the people who run Mother Earth News Magazine. And this is an unscented lotion bar from Honey Sweetie Acres. I'm hoping you can see that. And when they say unscented, they mean unscented. There is no smell to this at all. My husband has an issue sometimes with perfumes and scents, things like that. If I have candles or um, the wax melts in the house they actually have to be food smells done with uh, pure essential oils otherwise he can't handle them he gets migraines they make him sick it's just not good but these actually are completely unscented there is no smell to this one at all if you want something with a bit more smell they do have other ones available and I will put a link to their online store in the show notes but yeah these I never go anywhere without one of these in my project bag they are absolutely fantastic I love them so much and I had really really nasty bag crack dry skin on my knuckles and stuff from dying and the gloves and the water and being in and out of soap and everything else so this helped heal all of those cracks in the really nasty dry skin if you're a dyer or if you are just in water working with paper an awful lot snag one of those it really will help you the next things I'm going to show you I also discovered when we were at Mother Earth News I apologize for the crinkle um, there I go with the ends again knock it off woman these are teas what knitter or crocheter doesn't like having a good cup of tea when they are working on their stuff and this company is green rich tea these are natural teas the value for the size of the packaging you get is phenomenal. None of these was more, I want to say it was like $4.99 and $5.99 for one of these bags. So there's an awful lot of tea in here for that, you know, that cost. But these are really, really great. This was a new one we tried. It's the Holiday Nut Crunch. 
and it's got some hazelnut flavoring in it with apple and raisin it's very warm you have all the lovely spices for the season too that one's really good this i love this one this is their caramel mate which is just as yummy as what it sounds it has caramel bits some roasted chicory caramel flavor or caramel for those of you who might pronounce it that way it's also really really good and this one I'm looking forward to trying most of these are going to go for Christmas gift sandwich um, this was their chocolate chai it sounded really really good yeah I bought a lot of them because they had free shipping on any order over $25 so I got all of these in the same package then we had peach apricot we tried this one before and I know it's really awesome I had this is actually my husband's favorite because it's not a huge peachy fruity kind of flavor it's very very subtle and their divine temple which is a really great it's like a white and green tea blend but it's got some mango and pineapple papaya a little bit of orange some strawberry but it's a light not a heavy fruity flavor so if you're not a big fruit tea person this one is still really really good it's not heavy on the fruit flavors so if you're looking for a new tea company to try those guys are out of st germain wisconsin so they are a u.s company yes yeah, natural teas really great company they ship super fast too and what you're getting for, you know what they're charging is just incredible it's not badly priced i like i said i got all of those for just over 25 dollars and then the last thing I have is actually sewing related acquisitions. I had talked briefly last week and shown you the holiday quilt top that I'm planning to finish. I went out this week and actually bought the uh, backing fabric and the binding fabric that I'm going to use to make it. I am hoping that after this festival I will have some time to do some sewing next week and the week after. But this, I found this fabric. I'm going to use this on the back of the quilt. I thought it would be really, really fun. And those are actually, I don't know if they're coming across, but those are actually metallic. They are very, very sparkly. But they work with the top of the quilt, the rest of the fabrics that are in it. And then this I was going to use for the binding to go with it. Let's see if I can get these together so you can see it. But you would just have that tiny little black around the outside edge to sort of set everything off and make everything pop and stand out. And then I bought... I know a lot of people are big into fat quarters, and if you are Joann's, one thing I will recommend, check out the fat quarter bundles, because on a regular basis, when you shop at Joann's, their fat quarters are almost $3 each. Not for more than one, $3 each. What most people don't realize is if they look around the quilting section, they will find these fat quarter bundles, and you get five pieces in the fact quarter bundles for ten dollars and the coupons that they give always apply on these so you're getting actually a really really good deal here at a discount and it's definitely worth looking at these but I got a bunch of different ones and I love this one with all these turquoise turquoise and gray and deep teals I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with these they might get put into a quilt they might get made into something else we'll have to wait and see this one was fun it has the little Eiffel Tower there with some pinks and other blacks going on and then I just got a couple other you know random semi-solid packages and bundles and I love this one I almost bought this fat quarter when I saw it that I could get it in the bundle with all of these other ones I dropped the fat quarter and picked this up no questions asked so yeah and that one's a nice metallic with it it's like a silver that's printed on top of a, a beautiful lavender I'm hoping that comes out so that was you know the rest of my purchases this week which I think is plenty but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the fact borders yet like I said it couldn't be made into I might use them in a quilt I might use them in something else we'll have to wait and see where everything takes me what I'm in the mood for at that point in time um, haven't had much time to do any quilting or sewing like I said, I have been preparing for the festival that is coming up. And 
that doesn't leave me a whole lot of time to do sewing and, and stuff. Plus, you know, with trying to spend time with my husband, we did have our date day yesterday. We uh, went to the movies and saw Doctor Strange. I love the Marvel superhero movies. Um, not a big girly movie, chick flick kind of thing, but if you take me to like an Iron Man or a Doctor Strange or even a Harry Potter related movie, I'm there with you. <laughs> I like the action movies. Not necessarily gory, but I do like things that have a lot of excitement and whatnot going on. And if you have not seen Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch does not disappoint. Oh my goodness. Definitely worth seeing. I loved, loved, loved this movie. The super special effects that were in it were incredible without detracting from the movie in any way. With some movies, they are very, very distracting and this wasn't one of those. They just added and worked really, really well with the storyline. So I'm not going to tell you any more about it. Definitely worth seeing. I highly recommend going to see the movie. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll get to some more sewing and quilting soon. But what I did do uh, was work on my holiday cookie list. I have not actually gotten any baking done for my holiday cookie list, but I at least know what I'm going to bake and I've started, you know, buying my supplies and things like that and probably next week I will start with my baking and freezing that way I can get everything you know, shipped down to my daughter in plenty of time for her to have Christmas cookies too because some of them are for her. I did find a couple of new cookies though that I want to try. One has a picture, one does not and I'm going to put the link for the recipes in the show notes that way you guys can find them too. This one though sounded really really good. It is a turtle cookie it's a chocolate based thumbprint cookie that has the caramel filling that goes in the middle and then it's drizzled with chocolate on top. So that'll be a new one for me this year, but I really am looking forward to trying it. I'll have to let you guys know how they turn out. And the second one, my husband saw this recipe and just demanded I had to make these ones. He really, really liked the sound of it. This is a brown sugar pecan cookie, and this one actually does have a photo. So it sounds like it's just a basic dough, but then you use a make a brown sugar frosting to go on top of it with pecans in it and everything else. So this sounds really, really good too, and I'm hoping, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm planning to get this one, uh, try this one out for my Christmas cookie list this year as well. I don't think I will do the whole wheat flour. I know that would add an excellent nutty crunch to it. We'll have to see. I might. The recipe actually suggests doing a 50-50 split of whole wheat and all purpose. So we'll just have to see what I feel like doing at that point in time. Um, on the cooking front, I have been doing a fair amount of cooking this week. Some of the recipes are just ones I've been using for a very long time. But there was one I made that it's probably the only the second time I made it and they are just absolutely wonderful and I'll put a link to them. They are uh, hot ham and cheese, part, they're called par party rolls but they're kind of like a pinwheel. Um, I don't know how well the picture will show up there. but So what you are starting with, now this uses refrigerated pizza crust. I actually made my own pizza dough with my bread machine and then I just rolled it out to the size that I needed. Um, you can use the canned pizza crust. I think it re recommends the Pillsbury one. But you roll your, your crust out, you layer it with ham and cheese, roll them up, cut them into your pinwheels, and then you make a glaze. The only thing I did not do with this one, and yes, again, I'll have the link in the show notes for this recipe. Um, the glaze actually calls for poppy seeds. I la leave the poppy seeds out because if you have someone in your family that can get hit with a random drug test at work, the poppy seeds can create a false positive because they do show up as an opiate when they have a, a drug test done if they've been eaten by a said person recently. So I never put them in any of my recipes. We don't eat poppy seed bagels because my husband is you know can have a random drug test at work anytime, and I have friends who work for um, companies that have the same thing so just as a courtesy to them if you didn't know about that that is something to take into consideration when you're baking for other people poppy seeds are not always a good thing to put in your recipes so that's all I have as far as my knitting crocheting sewing and such 
Everything I'm going to talk to you from this point on is actually shop related. If you're not interested in what I have going on with the shop, go ahead and sign off here. I won't be offended if you are. Stick around for a few more minutes. I'm going to talk to you about one of the yarns that I do feature in my shop, or carry in my shop, and it is one of our standard yarns, and a couple other things that are going on. So if you're leaving me, I'm going to say goodbye at this point. If you're going to stick around, then let's plunge forward. So, uh, shop info and updates. This weekend, I'm actually leaving Friday morning, bright and early, to go to the PLAA Fall Fiber Arts Festival. Uh, that's the Pennsylvania Llama and Alpaca Association. This is being held at the Leesport Farmers Market in Leesport, Pennsylvania, which is out near Reading. I know that's going to be a far distance for some of you, but if anyone is going to stop by, please swing by the booth and say hello, introduce yourself. I would love to meet you. Um, the festival is Saturday, November 19th from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. and then again on Sunday, November 20th from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. And Sunday is actually my birthday. So swing on by and let me know whether or not you saw the podcast and what you think. But the yarn I want to talk to you about this week is actually our Woolly Yak. Now the Woolly Yak is a fingering weight three ply yarn and it is a blend that is 20% yak, 70% superwash merino, and 10% nylon. There are about 435 yards in a 100 gram skein. This one because of the yak I do strongly recommend that you hand wash it. Now this color here is our warm honey colorway and it's blowing out just a little bit. It's not quite that yellow. When you see it in person, it's actually in much warmer shade, but it's a gorgeous tonal, sort of golds and light browns. The Woolly Yak takes color so interestingly because it is actually a gray base to start. So any color that I add to it, the gray just makes it richer and warmer and deeper. So that was the Warm Honey, and I have this available in a wide variety of colors. I'm only showing you a handful today. If you want to see all of the colors that this is available in, go to the Etsy store, and I actually have a separate section just for the Woolly Yak colors. This one is Nightfall, which is a beautiful, rich, dark blue. It almost looks black in some light. But again, you have just the beautiful tonal shades there. This is emeralds. I know green is a very popular color at this time of year. And then we have Merlot, which is a rich burgundy sort of shade. Definitely looks like a nice glass of wine, but this is a rather non-alcoholic way to enjoy it. And then we have turquoise, which again, the yak just takes the color and makes it so rich and so deep. And you really have to feel this yarn for yourself. It is gorgeous. It has awesome drape. Um, I will have a sample in the booth if you're coming to the festival this weekend that you can see and feel and pet and fondle. And that's okay. I'm all right with all of that. This is our cherry red on the yak which is again a gorgeous deep red. It's showing up kind of pink here, but it's not. It's, it's a very deep kind of cherry kind of color. Raspberry Fizz, which is sort of a dusty rose type of shade. I'm hoping this actually does come out on your, you guys, for you guys on your screens. That you can kind of see the light and the dark areas in there. Sunshine and Daisies which actually looks a bit more green on the yak. It's a really, really bright yellow, but the gray, adding it to the gray just takes it and tones it down and just makes it absolutely gorgeous. And the last one I'm gonna show you is the blueberry, which is comes out looking very, very denim -y. It's incredible with blue jeans and it works well with dress clothes as well. So yeah, those are some of the shades that it, of the Woolly Yak that I do do dye. I have, say that four times fast, 
have not tried any of the multicolors on that. I'm contemplating doing some multicolors on it maybe next year sometime. Um, I also had a question on the last episode about whether or not I would be doing some mini skein sets. Um, the mini skeins, I'll be honest, are kind of new. I started carrying those just a couple of months ago and I hadn't thought honestly about doing mini skein sets but since someone asked I am considering it. It may not happen until possibly December so keep an eye out when I decide to do them. I will let you guys know and there will be a special update just for that. We are seriously in consideration about that. Um, some of them may just be the tonals but it is altogether possible that the Fantastic Beast colors will be coming to you as a mini skein set. So yeah, just stay posted. I'm still trying to work out the details with my husband and figure out exactly when we're going to do this and throw it in. But for now, um, I did mention earlier in the podcast, Sunday the 20th is my birthday. And November 27th, the following Sunday, is my husband's birthday. And because it is a big birthday month for us, if you haven't already seen it, we do have coupon code BDAY2016 going in the, uh, in the Etsy store. It's only valid in the online store. It is, will not be valid if you come see me at the festival. It's only valid in the online store. And it's good for 20% off your purchase until November 30th. Yes, I will have all of the details in the show notes and I'm going to try to get some text to appear on the screen. I'm still working on the editing and figuring all of that out. But yeah, take advantage of the coupon code. It's good until the end of the month. So don't wait till Black Friday. You don't have to wait until Cyber Monday. You can go and get 20% off any yarn purchase that you want to make right now. And even the Wooly Yak. If you are even considering trying the Wooly Yak, which is incredibly soft, the yak gives it awesome strength and just the drape that this stuff has. Guys, you have got to, you know, got to try this yarn. Even if I wasn't dyeing it, I would be all over this yarn. It's just, oh, it's heaven. It's so soft and squishy. So, yeah, use the coupon code BDAY2016. Take advantage of 20% off any purchase you want to make from the online store until November 30th. And that, my dears, is all I have this week. I know it's sort of a shorter episode, but I didn't figure I would want to take up too, too much, terribly much of your time. And like I said, it has been a very, very busy week for us. So, probably going to be about 10 days again until after I talk to you guys um, with the festival. I am going to try to get some footage of the festival and maybe do a little blurb or include it in my next podcast. Not real sure. Um, so just kind of stay tuned to the channel. Click that subscribe button to be notified of anything that I do put up. Um, trying to think. Probably won't do another one until after Thanksgiving. So it might be like that weekend. My husband, unfortunately, will be working. So I will be here kind of hanging out and working on some more Christmas gifts and maybe on some sewing and things like that. And yeah. Until I talk to you next time, keep crafting. If you have any questions or suggestions, head on over to the uh, Ravelry group or leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And I thank you again for joining me. Until I talk to you next time, bye.